In today's video I am going to talk about the TV Begone that I designed in 2017. The main improvement is that it's using the rechargeable battery, lithium polymer battery, compared to the other fruits one that's using double A's. Uh, the chip is also replaced with the 80 mega 328p. It's not using 80 tiny anymore and it's running at 8 megahertz. Uh, why at 8 megahertz? Because if you look at the graph, frequency versus the voltage for this chip, uh, it's stable at 8 megahertz from the 2.7 volts and up. So the leap of it's somewhere, life of it's somewhere in between here and the 8 megahertz is the sweet spot for it. So let's look at the PCB what I did and what I did in the new PCB in 2020. So here we have the battery charging IC. It's the TP4056, uh, the battery protection IC with its MOSFETs on the back at around 6 amps, which is way too much for this. The micro USB for charging, status LEDs and D13 LEDs. LED. Here we have the main power switch, which controls the N MOSFETs that supply the negative, uh, the ground for the this part of the circuit. So when when it's in uh, when it's not in use for a long time, you can turn it off here so you don't drain the battery in this this deep sleep mode. So here is the reset button and few decoupling capacitors. On top side, we can see here the emitter follower. This is the MPN transistor that drives the MOSFETs right there on the bottom and the resistors for the LEDs. That's also one big mistake of this board. I'm going to explain everything later. The programming is done via the pins here. I use the pogo pins, press them here. There is the SPI bus reset line, VBAT ground and the infrared signal that goes to the infrared LEDs so I can see if something is wrong on the logic analyzer. So let's see how I use it. I turn it on right here. It blinks once to tell you that it's ready in deep sleep mode. Here is the reset button and you wake it up here. As you can see, most of the LEDs are dead and this one is ready for, for its grave. So I'm going to talk about now what's wrong with, with the LEDs. Also, if you don't want to wait the cycle to end, you can just press the reset button. Here is the PCB from JLC PCB. The one on the bottom is from the OSH Park. As you can see, this is the back side. 24 mil carrying the current, which is more than enough. It's around 100 millivolts voltage drop at the worst case. It does not heat up, it remains that cold. And this is the front side of the PCB. The vias are a bit open, but it's, it's not a big issue. So let's look at the LEDs, what's wrong with it. This is the driver, the power part on the board, this one. All LEDs are in parallel, that's the big mistake. Then the four MOSFETs, which is overkill, and the resistors are down there. Also, the gate drive is bad because the rise time is okay, but the fall time is very slow because of this 1K resistor. It's also fixed in new PC, new revision. Uh, the main problem here is that LEDs are in parallel. Let's say this one runs at 2.4 volts at 1 amp, and this one runs at around uh, 2.38 volts. Basically, this one limits the voltage for all LEDs and it dies. Then uh, one LED is dead using very low current. Its 4 volt voltage is way much higher than the rest of the LEDs and three LEDs share the current for four LEDs. Then the next one dies and the cycle repeats until they all die. And that's the mistake on this board. It's also fixed like this. Uh, here is missing the VWAT. So we have the two pairs of LEDs in series. With one resistor, it's going to be driven at around 350 milliamps compared to one amp right here. 
so 350 milliamps here, 350 milliamps here, around one amp peak. And we have one MOSFET and all LED pairs have its own resistor. I mean three resistors times three and here times three so we can limit the spread the power dissipation. The MOSFET has its own pull down which is around one or 10k I'm not sure. This is around 68 ohms so we have fast rise time and slow uh, and fall time and we have the pair of emitter followers with, with its own gate uh, base resistors and the pull down when the microcontroller is in this deep slip mode so they don't turn on by accident here is the infrared signal going from the 80 mega here is one also so that's one big improvement in the power stage the leds are going to last much longer than here this one die about a few months later i hope this will run for years i mean the battery is going to die first so there is no way to program it via the usb i fixed that in new pcb revision so here is the new pcb uh, programming is done via this flat flex connector you can have the uh, you have here the reset line rx takes and the spi bus for the avr programmer there are three buttons that you can program as you like and the one main wake button which also can be there there is dual footprint you can put the small one or the big one however you like it there is also usb-c not micro b anymore there is usb to serial converter with its indication leds filtering and fuse also there is filtering on the ground and there is the battery protection here is the main MOSFET, P-channel MOSFET, that, cut, that cuts off the power to the top part of the PCB when this switch is in off position. Here is the reset button. Here is the main MOSFET that turns on and off the LEDs and the gate resistor, which I think that could be smaller. I could put here an 0603, not 0805, or maybe this is 1206, I'm not sure. And on the back side we have two res resistor banks, one bank for one pair, one bank for second pair. Uh, this bank on the right, these three resistors are used for the yellow LEDs, which are the wide angle LEDs. And these three resistors are used for this pair of blue LEDs, which are the narrow angle LEDs. And here is the emitter follower circuit for driving the MOSFET gate. Here is Here are the... Uh, the coupling caps and the pull-up resistor for the reset line also with the diode for the protection of the reset line from the over voltage case or ESD protection for example and on the front side uh, a laptop froze okay the front side we also have the USB ESD, pro ESD pro protection right here and the programming how do i program it when i assemble it so i designed the programmer that's that has the usb hub alongside with uh, the usb asp and the usb to serial converter and also with the log logic level shifting to adapt to the battery voltage so we don't damage the 80 mega on tv we go here is the flat flex connector that goes on the TV big on and the reset just for the TV big on. Here is the selection of the voltage, 5 volts or 3.3 volts for the logic signals. This switch here and in middle position it adapts to the V target voltage. And this is just for the slow clock. So yeah, one PCB just for programming and one PCB as TV big on itself. It's perfectly designed to be 1 inch by 1.77 inch, so it can fit a battery right here nicely, up to the ends of the LEDs. So when when I receive the PCBs, I'm going to test how much current can the traces handle without heating up and everything else. 
and then when I got to the, get to the money, I'm going to buy the parts and assemble this to test it out and develop the firmware that's going to be stable for this. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.